<laughs> All right, y'all. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do this. We have a whole brand new round of test with Hops number nine. This is kind of a Twitter deal. We were, somebody was talking about lubricant and I got tagged because of my lube off video. If you have not seen that video, you ought to check it out right here. It is ridiculously long, but well worth the watch. However, today we are gonna do a little, something a little bit different. Hops number nine was brought up because apparently, I guess somebody said, Solvent cleans bores and prevents rust in rifle shotguns, pistols that prevents rust. That's what we're focusing on. Prevents rust. Prevents rust. We're going to see how well hops number nine prevents rust and we're going to see what it does to locks. Hops number nine should not be used on locking mechanisms. It just shouldn't. It's a gun thing. Leave it for guns and fishing stuff. I mean, you can use it, but be prepared to call a locksmith down the road. I will note here that hops number nine, while it's used to clean the bore of guns and clean off the powder residue, it is almost always advisable to follow it up with a lubricating oil and that's why you will frequently see these two items sitting on any good redneck hunting person's bench these two go hand in hand you clean you get away the powder residue you get away the the whatever and then you follow it up with lubricating oil however we are just going to focus on the prevents rust well, I've got some control subjects here, just like my last video. I've got two of each one. What we have is we have a Baldwin deadbolt cylinder. One of each, actually. A Schlage cylinder. One of each, actually. Two of the older, and I might point out that these are pretty much pristine. Schlage old-style latches. So we're going to be testing the metal surface of this. A quick set cylinder, which, as you know, compared to the Baldwin and Schlage, is not brass, it is pot metal. So we are going to check it out. This is freshly pinned with lab pins. I will point out the Baldwin cylinders have nickel silver bottom pins, brass top pins, and brass springs, all original. The Schlage cylinders have nickel silver bottom pins. Uh, I, I think, let's check it out. I want to say it has nickel silver top pins as well but let's just verify that real quick uh, because basically what we're doing is seeing what happens okay so this is a it looks like a nickel silver top pin and a oh no don't lose it brass spring so Nickel silver top pin. I went and lost it anyway. Nickel silver top pins, brass springs. I am mostly curious as to what's going to go on with the springs, as I mentioned in that Twitter thread. Offhand, I can't remember who all was in it, but uh, there were several people in it. I do have four keys for these locks made up here. One of the four. There's that one. That's not it. That's it. So I went ahead and made keys to the existing locks. On the Schlegs, I'm going to go ahead and cap them. On the Baldwin, I'm not gonna cap them. It was requested that I use a shiny brass finish, so we have a perfectly still clear coated brass finish we're going to see what the hops number nine does to that and basically i'm going to wd-40 because i have wd-40 and i have really no other reason to use wd-40 so that'll be our alternate so i'm going to wd-40 and i put a little mark on each one there's a w that means w even on the front of one of these i've got w 
And also we're going to test two complete lock bodies. Now the difference between, this is, a, this is one of those teaching moments, right? I hope I'm in view. Am I in view? Better. I'm probably not in view. Now I'm in view. Listen, there's corrosion and there's rust. You really don't have a lot to worry about with rust per se when we're talking about the key cylinders because brass will corrode but not necessarily rust. Where you start worrying about your rust, if we look at this one real close, is where you have dissimilar metals and here is a good case of rust that is nothing but rust but if you go down we have rust and corrosion corrosion rust so obviously these untreated surfaces will rust others will corrode but typically the cylinders themselves will not rust it's just a corrosion issue so this was a lock that was replaced because it had a rough life on the back door of a restaurant so these are in perfect shape they live their lives on a uh, interior office building until we replaced them all with lever handles and uh, these are Corbin Russ one M hard actually passage locks that have no uh, very 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 little evidence of rust on them there's no rust no corrosion there may be a little bit right there, but it's very, very minute. Both of them are pretty much the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hose each one of them down, one of them with WD, one of them with hops number nine. Well, I'm not gonna hose it down, but I'm gonna like dribble it in it. And we are going to go through a series of tests, not quite as dramatic as the lube off one, but enough of a test to see what happens when you use hops number nine versus wd-40 the cylinders will get sealed up in here there's another case of rust i tried cleaning that as much as possible but if it prevents rust it should keep that rust uh, on these i'm going to seal them up in bags it'll probably eat through the bags i'm going to seal up a latch in each bag and then a doorknob in each bag so let's get started. We're gonna put them through a series of tests, like maybe burying them and exposing them to elements. So here we go, guys. Let's get started on hops number nine. Oh, I forgot to add, since we are talking about brass plugs and brass cores, I went ahead and threw in a mortise cylinder in the mix. This is a used cylinder. Um, on the Schlage, there is a metal cam right here. This always will rust in bad environments. It's always a problem when you have a rusty one of these because the pin will not work, will not push in, and the cap will not unscrew because this metal part right here interacts with the brass core and the brass pin. Similarly, the metal cam will react with the brass, which it's, it's chrome plated, but it's, this is actually all brass. So the cam will definitely rust, the screws definitely rust. So that is just a couple other fine points that I wanted to point out there. So hops number nine going in the bin and the rest is going in bags. So off we go. Okay, all these are going into the bucket of doom. The bucket of doom. I don't know Oh, how much hops number nine I have. Oof. But we're gonna use it. I'm just gonna put a little dribble down each. <laughs> oh, that was, oh, I got a cut in my finger that hurts like a son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, wow. Oh, I forgot that I cut my finger earlier. Oh, I am remembering now. <clears throat> oh, boy. Oh boy, 
Okay, so I think we are thoroughly coated. We'll go ahead and throw the keys in there too to see what it does. Oh, my finger. <laughs> it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. Okay. All right, that was fun. <coughs> that was fun. <coughs> that was fun. <coughs> Using well ventilated area. Okay, on to our WD. Okay. Very hoppy. Hoppy. For our WD test, I am just going to hose them down. There's one. There's two. All right, there's that. <clears throat> and lastly, I forgot to do my, uh, little, uh, let's see, I'm not gonna do this. Get a good good coating there. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> that did I do the right one? I hope I. I hope I did the right one. I don't want to touch the other one. Um, so, lastly, we need to let me move this out of the way. Uh, I forgot to coat this one with hops number nine. Oh, man. So, what I'm going to do on this one is probably try to like cup it here a little bit. Oh, I used, I guess I'm going to use all of my hops. Number nine. Oh my goodness. Yeah, let's get this in the bag with the paper towel. Okay, guys, I used. I guess we're only going to do one coat because I'm not going to buy any more of that. All right, start the timer. We will see what happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let them all dry on their own, like, you know, just dry up, and then we'll start subjecting them to different tests and uh, see, I guess, how long it lasts. So we'll uh, carry this on when I get around to checking them next time. Okay, guys. So, how far out can you see? Stretchy it and doing so good. Oh, okay. Nah, I'm not gonna do it. It hurts too bad. Fogging up my glasses. Let's take a look at some fairly predictable results. This is Hops number nine versus WD-40. Neither of which you should really use, but let's see which is worse. 
WD-40, we are going to start off, if we remember, I've got two cameras going here, so if one goes out of view, I don't know how I'm going to edit this. These are the WD-40, these are the uh, Hops number nine. As you remember, this was soaked with WD-40 and works fine. No signs of rust. No signs of rust. So, that still is kind of gooey. We are going to take the, oh, oh latch out works perfectly no signs of rust works fine no signs of rust And the Baldwin cylinder works fine. No signs of rust or corrosion. In that short of time, WD-40 would indeed do it, but eventually it will get sticky and nasty and is not an ideal long-term lubricant when there are many more choices available. So we're going to start off with the easy one. This is hops number nine. Am I, am I even recording here? Damn, I wasn't recording. Okay, now I'm recording. This is the hops number. I think I'm recording. Yeah, I am now. Oh, oh, strong and corroded. So it works. But has obvious corrosion compared to the other one. <clears throat> Not so drastic. But we're going to now move to the bad one. I have randomly peeked into this container a few times and it is bad guys. Bad, bad. Hard to open too, my dad. Let's see. All right, you ready? Oh, oh, what has happened? Oh, I can't, I can't breathe through that thing. Oh my goodness. It's turning green. Quick set. What did it do? Didn't really do. Ooh. Oh, look at that. It's it's like melting it. Oh, gross. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at the brass finish. Let's put it here and we'll put it side by side over here. Oh yes, warps that finish big time. Okay, the keys. Let's check these keys. 
Now, this may not be the right key. Let's look at the keys. We'll wipe them off and look, see. Oh, cool patterns. Is this the right key? That's not the right key for this one. It's for one of the other ones. Oh, here's one that was sitting in it for a while. Definitely does some crazy stuff to brass. Okay, that's not that key either. Okay, there's only one other Schlage key in here. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, this one, this one's, this one should be. Yes. So the key still works smoothly. So now the Baldwin. Here is a testament to Baldwin finish. Look at that. Perfect. That is a testament to Baldwin finish. Did not hurt it whatsoever. Go Baldwin. That clear cut that they use has always been awesome. And it works. Alright, what's that happen here? Nothing happened to it. Nothing at all. Try and get the key out of here. And it works. Just fine. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we didn't check the quick set key. Look at all that green. And it works. It works. I don't know where all that goo came from. But it didn't actually dissolve the metal. And lastly, let's see what happened to our latch. Killed the finish on that. I was expecting that. Let's see what it did to the inside. Woo! Boom! Started eating into the metal of the latch, too. The surface metal is okay. And it functions. But it sure would not if we left that in there for a long, long time. Ugh. All right, so guys, really I don't know how much, how much more we need on that. Again, this was not meant to be a uh, a really long video what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change gloves we're gonna ignore the WD-40 it's like whatever I'll just leave that in that bag I'm going to take this one and the Schlage apart and we're gonna get a look at the pins and I'll put out a picture there but other than that uh, that is it so let's check out the pins and we'll go from there. Okay, I don't really think it's necessary to tear this one down, but I will lay it out to get a cool photo of it. But let's go ahead and see how this plays out. Let's 
slippery. Well, it's very easy to get off. No harm, no foul on the pins. Oh, uh, yeah, there is a little bit of... There is a little bit going on there. No damage to springs, uh... So from a case study standpoint, we don't really need to... Maybe I'll take apart the quick set one. But... It looks like we don't have any noticeable... Any noticeable issues with neither the springs or the top pins. Maybe a little bit of corrosion trying to form on it. But if we look real close at these nickel silver pins, and I'm gonna get a uh, I'm gonna get a close up photo of this because it's gonna need magnification to really t stay apart from each other. All right, and this is this was a pretty one. Really stuffed up that finish. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, I'll go ahead and do this one real quick. Again, the cap was easy to get off. It was not corroded. key and the other pins not so lucky oh. brass pins did better Yeah, we're good on pins and springs, but check out that plug. Uh, I checked these top pins beforehand and they were already kind of a darkish color from just age. So that is not because of hops number nine. That is just how they were anyway. And lastly, oh well, let's do quick set. Ooh. 
no damage whatsoever. Not even. Took the color off the pins. But really only the key had any effect. to go back home. Yeah, no real biggie here. Uh, I think this was one. And I think I lost a couple of springs. Oh no, I got them all. And lastly, our beautiful bald one has no damage whatsoever, except for the key. Oh, and except the inside. Look at this. We got greenery happening. Greenery. Pretty sure they weren't all green to begin with. Springs. Top pins. All totally okay. Totally fine. Didn't hurt the springs at all. Didn't hurt the finish at all. And this one, we're just going to guess. Same thing. Really didn't do anything. You know, it was only in there for a few days, so who knows? Who knows? But what I do know is do not, for the love of God, use hops number nine, which I threw away to lubricate or rust prevent your locks. Save it for cleaning guns. Use a lubricant for lubricating locks. WD-40. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But, obviously, and we knew this going into it, but this was just to satisfy a, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? So, in this series of close-up photos, this is what happens when you use hops number nine on brass. It really affects the finish unless you have bald one. So if you want to make your keys interesting colors then soak them in hops number nine. Otherwise leave it for the guns. Thanks for watching guys and again here's a few video or a few close-up pictures and then we'll pan off into the sunset. Until next time thanks again for watching. If y'all have any questions or comments post them and peace. Y'all have a great one.
stuck in nostalgia. 